You mentioned, I want to go back to local for just a second. You mentioned uh, Jeff Andrew before, and that's your home district, right? District two. That is um, right. And yeah, and he switched from Democrat to Republican and he won re-election in November. What are his chances like in 2024? Um, I think his chances in 2024, are, well, first of all, you know, he's up in 2022. Um, it, it depends on... It depends on a lot of things. It depends on who his challenger is. It depends on what the map looks like. Um, typically, what we know is that, as a political scientist, um, incumbents tend to fare pretty well in off-year elections. We also know that the president's party tends to lose seats in the first election after a president taking off. Right. So in those midterms, usually the president's party loses seats. We also know that CD2 is not being targeted by the National Democrats at this point. We know that Van Drew's fundraising has been much better than it has been in the past, largely prompted by um, Trump supporters nationally giving to him. He was one of the, the 136 um, Republicans that that um, is, advocated not um, certifying the election results. And, and so all of those things point in favor of a win in, in 2022 um, for him. Again, you know, who, who knows, could voters be really unhappy in the second? They should be in my view, but, but that's a story for a different day. 2024 is a little different. You know, it depends on who, first off, the most important determinant is what that district looks like, right? So. If in redrawing the district lines, they say, well, Van Drew's in, we're going to make this a solidly Republican district and take chunks of Ocean County, which is predominantly Republican, put more of them in, in CD2, then it becomes a safe Republican seat. Um, if that happens, then in, in 2024, he's still in pretty good shape. Um, but 2024 is a long way off, right? Wow. So. You know, who knows who the presidential nominee will be at that point. Um, we also know that Democrats tend to fare better in presidential election years in the state of New Jersey. Sure. And you mentioned that it also is going to depend on who's his candidate, uh, who his opponent is. Um, any announcements or breaking news on that front? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I, I'll say to you what I've said to everybody who's asked that question. As you know, EJ, I, I challenged, well, I, I started off challenging Van Drew. Um, when he was still a Democrat and um, back in December after he had voted against the impeachment inquiry. And I, I threw my hat in the ring just because I thought that when a, a um, person, you know, is a member of a political party is elected as a member of a political party. Um, and there comes this really serious issue litmus test. And this is why you elect people within that political party and they fail you. Um, that somebody needed to hold him accountable. And I, I attempted to do that, um, but was unsuccessful in the primary. And, you know, a lot of that depends. Um, I, I faced a, a kind of cannonball of a, an opponent in Amy Kennedy, who comes from, her husband comes from a political dynasty. Um, the Kennedy name is something that, that no one, I believe in that district can take on in a primary. I, I don't think it's the right name for a general election in CD2. Um, but it is unbeatable in, in, in a primary. And so if she were to decide to, to run again, she would have the nomination, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, a lot of it, like I said, depends on what redistricting looks like. Could be that, you know, they decide demographic changes mean that this is going to be a democratic district. And then, you know, all bets are off. What was it like to run for office after spending so much of your adult life analyzing that very process? And now here you are in the middle of it. Yeah, I mean, it was um, some of it was not what I expected and not what I bargained for. So, uh, you know, I, I give a lecture to my students that I've been giving for 20 years. And I always say to them, if anybody ever asks you to run for office, the first thing you ask is, is the seat an open seat? Or are you running against an incumbent? If, if you're running against an incumbent, you run the other way. And so the question then becomes, why did you decide to do this? And I decided to do it because I felt like I had a moral responsibility. Um, I felt like I was a, a good candidate for a general election in, in that district. I felt like, um, you know, that the 
the Democratic Party needed a moderate to be able to win a primary, but also be able to win in general um, against Van Drew. And I, you know, what I, what kind of, I would say quite frankly, what kind of sucked was uh, I worked all of these years building a, a kind of impeccable professional repu reputation. Um, I was banking on going in and running against Jeff Van Drew, who at that time was a Democrat. My thinking was that he would either switch parties or drop out or perhaps take an, a position in the Trump administration. And he did, he switched parties. And, and then when I had to run in a primary, you know, kind of at the back of my mind always was, I didn't get in this to beat up on other Democrats. I got in this because this individual betrayed his country, betrayed his party, but betrayed his constituents. I'm not particularly interested in beating up, you know, people that, with whom I agree on 90% of the issues. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm not a thin skinned person, but it, it was kind of not a great experience to, you know, read about my daughter on the front page of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, it wasn't, you know, there were so many lies that were told, um, but I learned that you can't kind of put lies back in the box. And so it, it made me much more um, wary, um, you know, about people who purport to be your allies or whatever. But anyway, um, the other part of it is that it's really hard to fundraise in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> so I, I learned that lesson as well. It's, it, it, you know, you can't, and you can't do the kind of politics that is free. You can't knock on people's doors. You can't have rallies. Um, so, you know, and you're, I was running against a Kennedy who, you know, spent one and a half million dollars running against me and brought Martin Luther King III to campaign against me. I mean, how do you, how do you combat that, right? Um, you know, so, so it was, that experience, um, I would not recommend. Um, but the, the best part of it was even during COVID, talking to voters, and I learned an incredible amount about the district and what the district needs. And the, the needs of that district are incredibly compelling. So, you know, if you're not familiar with the second, it is essentially the bottom third of the state from the Atlantic Ocean to the Delaware River. Mm. And in that you have everything from relatively urban areas like Atlantic City and Vineland to the garden of the garden state. You have urban poverty, you have rural poverty, you have essentially a microcosm of the United States when it comes to the issues that, that we're dealing with. The opioid crisis is the worst in the southern part of the state. Um, child maternal health care, the worst in that part of the state, um, among the worst schools, public schools in that part of the state, um, all of the poverty indicators for children, highest unemployment rates. Um, the metropolitan statistical area that I live in has the highest foreclosure rate in the country. Oh. Um, and so we need, we need federal help. And we have this knucklehead in Congress who is saying that, no, we shouldn't be supporting the Infrastructure Act. Well, you know, you know I'd, I'd be at the White House kind of begging the president of the United States to extend the rail line. You know, you look at a, a, a public transportation map of the map of New Jersey and you would think that it ends at mile marker 100. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, there, there is a lot of work to be done. And, um, you know, I, I'm hoping that that someone is able to accomplish it. New Jersey State.